this creepy statue is found in Barcelona's Pablo Now Cemetery. It is hidden in the back corner of the cemetery and it is unclear who exactly sculpted it. However, textile manufacturer Joseph Le Dirt Sola is interred at the site of the statue and the inscription is equally as haunting. The blood in his veins grows cold and all strength has gone. Faith has been extolled by his fall into the arms of death. Amen. This statue may look creepy, but it actually has a romantic story. This is the tombstone of a musician and actor, Fernand Abelot, buried in the Père Lachaise Cemetery in France. The tombstone shows him holding his wife's face as he wished to gaze at her for eternity. This unusual grave of two skeletons holding hands is the eternal love husband and wife grave in Thailand. You will find this creepy statue in the Lakeview Cemetery in Ohio. It's the Hazarot Angel, a famous statue in the graveyard for its eerie representation of the Angel of Death victorious. This eerie statue marks the graves of Francis Hazarot and his family who were well known and wealthy during the 20th century. This is the grave of Kitty J and Kitty J's grave is supposedly the burial place of a suicide victim in the late 18th century. It's located at the side of a minor road about a mile northwest of Hound Tor at the entrance to a green lane leading to Natsworthy. As early as 1905, the grave was being mentioned in guidebooks and by the 1960s, Kitty J's grave has become a major Dartmoor attraction, with tourist coaches stopping there while the driver tells his own version of the ghost stories. One version is an orphan baby was taken into the poorhouse at Newton Abbott. The little girl was named and it was the custom with a surname beginning with whatever letter the overseers had got to. And in this case, J. Mary J remained at the poorhouse until her teens and then was sent to Canna Farm outside Manhattan. Here she was to be employed as an apprentice and inquired the name Kitty. While at the farm, she was either raped by a local farmhand or fall in love with the farmer's son. She consequently becomes pregnant and is thrown out. In despair, she hangs herself in a barn or from the kitchen fireplace or drowns. Many people have seen flowers left at her gravesite and it's been a popular spot for ghost hunters yet no one claims to have left the flowers on her grave. So you make up your mind about Kitty J. This is the marker of the Wood Plumpton Witch. Nestled among the neat headstones in St Anne's Churchyard in Wood Plumpton near Preston is a boulder marking the grave of Meg Shelton. Known as the Flied Hag, she was accused of witchcraft in the late 17th century. Allegations centred on the fairly tame stealing milk and the more impressive, turning herself into an animal. She was killed in mysterious circumstances when a barrel crushed against a wall in her cottage. Folklore has said that she's dug her way out of her grave on more than one occasion. She was eventually buried head down in a narrow shaft so that if she tried to claw her way out she would be heading in the wrong direction and instead burrow her way into hell. The boulder was put on top as an extra way of keeping her anchored into the grave. The grave of Lily E. Gray stands in the Salt Lake City Cemetery. It's a simple plain flat stone that lists here birth date and death date, June 6, 1881 and November 14, 1958. 
It's what's written next to these figures that makes the stone legendary. Victim of the Beast 666. That's all that is carved on Lily E. Gray's grave, except for a few flowers. According to hospital records, she died of natural causes. Her short obituary listed nothing extraordinary. In other words, there is no records or hints to explain this mysterious message. There is a lot of theories about the message on her grave and there's been many stories written about it. Um, but they believe that her husband, Elma Lewis Gray, held most of the answers. You may go to a church in France and there's a three metre tall stone skeleton staring at you as if he forgot to cut you in half or tear your head off in some sadistic ritual. That is what I call warmth. And some still wonder that churches aren't as full as they used to be. This is creepy. This bronze monument was unveiled at Exchange Flag Square behind Liverpool Town Hall in October 1813. It was designed by Matthew Coates Wyatt. Admiral Horatio was killed while leading the English Navy to victory against French Napoleon forces at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. The monument was Liverpool's first major public sculpture and commemorates Nelson as a great English hero. To Liverpool merchants, the defeat of the French meant that they could once again trade internationally in peace. The prisoner this sculpture is the West prisoner taken from the monument, one of the four prisoners that represent captured sailors in torment from Nelson's four greatest triumphs. About 4,000 French prisoners of war were held in Liverpool during the Napoleon Wars. The sculpture was funded by public subscription. William Roscoe donated a large amount of money to the fund and influenced the choice of designer. As Roscoe was an anti-slavery campaigner, there are debates around the sculpture having a dual role in symbolising both prisoners of war and the suffering produced by slavery. Nestled near the back of Allegheny Cemetery, sprawling 300 acres sits a headstone quite unlike any other. Lester Madden was a big Jaws fan and when he died he wanted a tombstone of Jaws. So here it sits in a cemetery near Pittsburgh. Not much is known about this statue but she's called the Destiny and it's a sculpture for a grave in Olsdorf Cemetery in Germany. While not a headstone per se, this is a memorial with an actual head in it. The skull apparently belongs to St. Vitalis of Assisi, who, we kid you not, is the patron saint of venereal disease. Born in 1295 and dying May 31, 1370, Vitalis was a Benedictine monk he lived most of his life in poverty. After his death, his head was apparently kept as a relic. Since the 17th century, it has been housed in a Queen Anne case. In 2011, the skull was sold in an auction for 3,500 euro to be living in Los Angeles, California. This is the grave of Jules Verne from 1828 to 1905. He was an author, poet and playwright. He is best remembered for his adventure novels with such classics as Around the World in 80 Days and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. He is one of the authors sometimes referred to as the father of science fiction, along with H.G. Wells and Hugo Gernsback. He rests in the Cemetery de la Madeleine Armines in France. So this last tombstone I feel is more sad than creepy and this tombstone was inscribed in a time when the word monster was often used to describe a person with severe deformities in any form. 
Considering that, and also the short span of time for which the baby lived, it can be theorised that the baby was severely deformed and could not live for long. The death of the baby is not certain, and it's interesting to know that no real name was given to this poor baby.